Let me paint a picture for y'all real quick. So you spend an entire year complaining how bad 2K is and how it's exactly the same as last year's game to inevitably just get the new game anyways. You decide you want to do a My League rebuild. You want to get your team to win a championship ASAP so you mortgage out all your assets to get some win now talent. But then you come across one specific issue. Teams are not allowed to trade their first round picks in consecutive years. The stepping rule. You think, wow, that's really annoying and you probably turn it off in My League settings. But at some point you've probably wondered where the rule even came from and why does it even exist in the first place when it causes such an inconvenience while playing 2K? Well to find the answer to that we have to go back 40 years ago to the early 1980s. Anyways, a businessman by the name of Ted Stepien bought a 38% interest of the Cleveland Cavaliers and later that year held majority control of the franchise. Now instead of picking a competent GM to make moves for the team, he instead decided to supersede this power and make decisions on the GM's behalf. He came in with a vision for the franchise to win now. Now that sounds good when you hear it, but the problem is, is that he had absolutely no idea what he was doing. This proved to be not the greatest series of moves. For starters, he fired five coaches over the course of three years, and then made a multitude of trades that nearly caused the league to forcibly disperse the Cavaliers. Yeah, it got pretty bad. So firstly, Ted Stepien traded away their 1982 first round pick in exchange for Lakers guard Don Ford. Now as a rebuilding team, you should probably value your first round picks more highly instead of swapping them out for scrubs that average 3.5 points per game. Why? Well, that 1982 first round pick became none other than James Worthy. Already not looking too great for good old Teddy here. He would then go on to trade the Cavs 1983, 1984, 1985, and 1986 first round picks to the Mavericks for... Wait, who the hell are these guys? Well, with the Cavs draft picks that the Mavericks now owned, they would go on to pick Derek Harper, Sam Perkins, Detlef Schrempf, and Roy Tarpley. Some of those names you probably do recognize. So after trading away all these picks, there was a major worry that Stepien would trade away the rest of the Cavs picks for the foreseeable future going into the 90s. Now to combat this, Commissioner at the time, Larry O'Brien, told Stepien that he was not allowed to trade away any more first round picks without the league's express written consent. That is how bad it got. But at that point, the damage had already been done. Ted Stepien lost the money throughout this whole ordeal, and he ruined the Cavaliers' future. So he decided to sell the team. Now after this entire debacle, the league decided they did not want to see this happen to any other team going into the future ever again, especially if that team was in a major market. So they enacted the Stepien Rule. So, do y'all know the history of the Stepien Rule now? You do? Great! Now I'm about to tell you why the stepping rule makes absolutely no sense and needs to be abolished. Reason number one, it doesn't even stop a team from mortgaging out their future like Ted Stepien did. Now let's take a look at the past few years when there's been a major trade involving draft picks. The Paul Pierce KG trade, the Anthony Davis trade, the Paul George trade, and most recently the Drew Holiday trade. Now all of these included a heaping amount of first round picks in exchange for the respective players, all of which had a team giving up first rounders in consecutive years. But truth, if the Stepien rule doesn't allow a team to trade consecutive first round picks, how did all these teams still manage to do it? Well, that is a great question, my valuable viewer. See, even though a team can't trade two consecutive first round picks, they can offer what is called a pick swap for alternating years, which basically means out of the two teams that made the deal, the team offering out the pick swap gets the lesser pick out of the two teams. For example, the Celtics had an option to swap picks in the 2017 draft with the Brooklyn Nets. Keep in mind, Boston just came off of an Eastern Conference Finals berth and Brooklyn had the worst record in the league. However, in the end, Jason Tatum ended up in Boston. Now, swap options do make sure that these teams still have a first round pick for alternating years, which is obviously better than not having one. But if the team isn't good by then, the pick that they would get isn't nearly as high as what their original pick was. Back to the Brooklyn-Boston situation. While Boston got Brooklyn's first overall pick, Brooklyn was left with Boston's 27th pick. Obviously not what a rebuilding team needs. Yes, the team on the other end still has a first round pick, but it's a lot easier to get high quality talent within the top three as opposed to the bottom three of a draft class. So basically what I'm saying here is that a team can still mortgage out all their draft picks if they so choose to. The stepping rule doesn't even stop what the team feared a team could do to ruin their future coming into fruition. In other words, it doesn't even work for its intended purpose. Reason number two, it doesn't protect bad teams from ruining their futures, but it does restrict competitive teams. So let's say a team like the Knicks, if they so chose to, they could trade away 
all of their picks with swap options and alternating years for the next seven years in exchange for low quality players in the exact same manner to what Ted Stepien did. And the Stepien rule itself would deem this completely legal. However, if a team like the Milwaukee Bucks, y'all know the Bucks, right? Pretty good team. They got Giannis, back-to-back -back MVP and Defensive Player of the Year, Chris Middleton, and Drew Holiday, and a really nice roster for the foreseeable future. Now, the Bucks obviously don't really value draft picks like a lottery team such as the Knicks do, so they're more inclined to trade them away knowing that their best players are with them for years to come. And let's say another solid win now player becomes available, uh, Derrick Rose for instance. And let's say the asking price was just a single first round pick in salary filler. Well, because of the stepping rule, Milwaukee wouldn't be allowed to trade away their 2021 nor their 2023 first rounders. And offering swap options instead also wouldn't work because, well, let's be real, the Bucks are going to be much better than the Pistons for a while. So comparing these two situations, under the Stepien rule, the Knicks, who are a rebuilding team, could trade away all their picks that they most certainly do need in the future for basically nothing without a second thought. While the Bucks, a championship contending team, aren't allowed to trade away the remaining picks for more win now talent, even though those draft picks are most likely going to be the bottom five of the first round for each of those years. Does, does that make any sense to y'all? To recap, one, it doesn't even stop a team from giving out all their picks. And two, while it doesn't even protect bad teams from ruining their futures, it does restrict competitive teams from making moves. For these reasons, I am calling on the NBA to officially abolish the Ted Stepien rule. But truth, what if another Ted Stepien comes along and does exactly what he did? Okay. Look, I'm not trying to say that the rule should be abolished because a team should be allowed to do whatever they want even if it ruins them simply because it's their team. I get it. There have to be statutes in place so a team does not destroy itself. I am arguing that the Ted Stepien rule doesn't even do that. That's why it needs to be abolished and replaced with a more effective rule. So what is this new rule that I'm talking about? This will be known as the Billy King rule. So to translate the legalese here, a team can't trade away all their picks for three consecutive years in a row, and they can't do three swap options in a row. They also can't do two picks in a row with the third year being a swap option, and they can't trade a pick in year one and then have the next two years be swap options. Basically, if they don't own any other picks, they have to keep their pick for that third year. Now to contextualize this, it basically would have stopped the Brooklyn Nets from absolutely shooting themselves in the foot. So they would have sent Boston their 2014 first round pick, and they already had a swap option in place with Atlanta for the 2015 draft, which means in that third year in 2016, they would not have been allowed to do anything with their pick, which means in that third year in 2016, they would not have been allowed to do anything with their pick. They would have had to keep it and lo and behold, they end up with Jalen Brown because of it and then they're free to trade away their 2017, 2018, and 2020 picks to Boston. While this loosens the amount of consecutive years, it still fills the loophole of pick swapping that screwed the Nets out of Jalen Brown or Jamal Murray, and it also is probably going to help the Rockets in 2027. Now going to the other side of the spectrum with contending teams, with this rule intact, Going back to the Bucks situation where they would want Derrick Rose, this would make a trade involving their 2021 first round pick completely valid. It doesn't unnecessarily restrict their ability, nor any other team's capability, to deal their picks for something more valuable. And since the Bucks are a contending team, if they truly wanted to trade their 2023 first rounder, they can make a plea to Adam Silver to do so since they've proven that they do not need it. And it does a much better job at protecting a tanking team's ability to more out all their assets by forcing them to keep some of their own picks and it allows contending teams to act without useless restrictions so that is the end of today's video i want you all to let me know what you think of the billy king rule do you like it this way or would you make some changes be sure to let me know down below in the comments if you did enjoy be sure to leave a like subscribe and turn on notifications for future nba content i upload every tuesday thursday at 3 p.m eastern standard time and while you're at it follow me on twitter with that being said i'll see you guys next time